Glenn Schumann is not going to Alabama to be the Tide's defensive coordinator. We'll start right there. I'm Wes Blankenship, Jay Crow, Jay Cruz, Palmer Toms. Gentlemen, what does this mean for the dogs? We were chatting right before we started here. Does it necessarily mean that Georgia has uh, eliminated all threats to take Glenn Schumann away, or is this just worth celebrating in its own right? For all I know, Glenn Schumann could go be the athletic director at Point University. Um, you know, I really don't know. Uh, I, I do know that he's not going to go to Alabama and become the defensive coordinator. I mean, maybe, maybe Nick Saban truly does have something up his sleeve, and he's going to bring him back as an analyst. Maybe Glenn Schumann doesn't like money, and and, and wants to go back and make five figures or something. I don't know, but um, I tell you what, I didn't expect Kevin Steele. That's the <laughs> that's really what I'd like to talk about a little bit more than anything. I'm kind of like that. Uh, like I was telling Roos about this joke that Nate Bargatze did the other day. You walk in, and sometimes there's people that you know kind of have some things that they'd really like to talk to you about, but you know they're a little controversial. And, um, I'd like to talk more about Kevin Steele um, mm -hmm. becoming Alabama's defense coordinator because that's pretty hilarious to me. Yeah, listen, I, you got to take – if you're a Georgia fan, I say take a victory lap because Glenn Schumann's sticking around for sure. I mean, it's it, Alabama was easily the biggest threat, right? And who could have blamed him? It's a unilateral move to some degree. I mean, it was you, you were going to transfer over to a very similar job under a, a similar type coach. And – it probably boiled down to money and loyalty in the end, and Georgia was able to match the money, and then it looks like the loyalties with Kirby Smart. Like you said, you can't write anything off. Who knows? Maybe he uh, uh, becomes the head coach of the Arizona Cardinals after this season, but <laughs> they've, they've done such things before. But uh, listen, I, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be here, sit here and deride Alabama for the Kevin Steele hire. I think that's a push. I think it's a push. I think it's a push over Pete Goldick. I really do. Seems like a push, yeah, from where they were. I mean, uh, in a vacuum, yeah, steal, stop the steal, you know. But uh, <laughs> Pete Golding's such a good recruiter, though. And uh, I don't know. Maybe he, whatever happens at Alabama, I, I completely agree with a lot of their fans who are saying they've got to fix linebacker because they're just not, they haven't been very good at linebacker for a while. We got um, Trez. Henry, Trez Henry man. Toto is not Toa Toe. To you know, toe, uh, he's not, he hadn't been that great for them. And then, uh, Wes, I, I want to actually ask you a question because we don't get a chance to say, like, Hey, Wes, what do you think, bud? Um, you know, what do you think about, you know, Glenn? Were you worried? Were you concerned about Glenn Schumann kind of moving on? And did it, did it at any point get like, man, this is just too quiet? This is just too quiet. It's going to come out of nowhere. Um, I think when I saw Tresman Marshall go and I saw all of the, Alabama fans begging in uh, the Twitter mentions of Glenn Schumann's tweet, <laughs> and it just reeked of desperation at that point. Yeah. And then nothing happened after that for several days, and then days became weeks. Kind of became apparent to me that Bama wasn't going to get that guy. So I don't know if I was ever worried about it, uh, but as far as uh, Schumann's decision, um, I thought maybe – Bama could have struck while the iron was hot right when Tresman Marshall transferred, if that was going to be the time period for Schumann and Bama to work something out, but it never happened. But yeah. Here's the, here's the thing. And I think it's big to keep Glenn Schumann, but Georgia would have been just fine without him. It's, it's not even that. I mean, I think it's a bigger hit to the inside linebacker coaching than it is the overall defense because you've got, Kirby there, who's who's called plays and, and been a successful defensive coordinator. You've got Will Muschamp that's a co-coordinator there. I think the inside linebackers is the position where it would have hurt Georgia more. Um, you know, and, and I think if you're looking at the two coordinators, Georgia fans would give up Glenn Schumann to keep Todd Munkin. Mm. I, I mean, I mean, yeah, I, 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 I don't he, disagree. He, he I don't seems disagree. To disagree with that, Jake. Luckily, that doesn't know. have to be I don't a know, choice. Man. Glenn Schumann. <laughs> Glenn Schumann is – he's beloved, man. I mean – But but here's the thing is he's probably only here for – in Athens for another, you know it, – it's it's just a matter of time until he gets well, a head Christ, coach. man, he's already like been here for then. seven. And Kirby – but but you've got – But the thing is, is, is have, he showed up. Who's to have, say he's not the oh, new yeah. Kirby where he's just waiting out the – I'm saying you had been a grad assistant. Right, the right well, thing. You, yeah. analyst. you have yeah. Kirby. You have Kirby. You've got your defensive guy, Right. Yeah, I I just you're you're as good defensively as you are. 
because of Glenn Schumann and not just because of inside linebackers. It's because of how he can recruit to everybody. And he's a tone setter in that program. And listen, man, I mean, I, I think Glenn Schumann is Kirby Smart to Nick Saban. I mean, I think that that's kind of the way it is. And I'm not saying it's going to fall apart or anything like that, but but Glenn Schumann is to Kirby what Kirby was to Nick Saban. And I think if you I make this or get things – You disagree? I don't, I don't I think there's a more clear comparison between the two. I, I, I'm going to – Palmer, I'm, I'm going to – I I think where you're coming from, and I sort of agree with this, Glenn Schumann was not the traveled coach that Kirby Smart was by the time Kirby Smart fell on himself Bingo. under Nick Saban. And so, you know, uh, what what's happened for Glenn Schumann is he's gotten to grow up under Kirby Smart. Kirby Smart grew up on the road with uh, under – no, under Nick Saban in a lot of cases, but he was at LSU. He was at Miami. You know I mean? He's – He's been what Valdosta State. He's been a well-traveled guy, and so he kind of cut his chops. Glenn Schumann. I'm not saying he, I'm not saying he woke up on third base by any uh, stretch of the imagination, but I just I assume that's where you're coming from. No, he yeah, helped Georgia Kirby. build what Georgia's got. Yes, and I agree with that. I, what you're saying is Kirby was Nick Saban's protege, and and I do absolutely agree with that. And and Glenn Schumann is Kirby's protege. There's a reason why he brought him over and, and promoted him from, from the position he was in at Alabama. But I just don't think that it's, it would be as detrimental. I think that, I think that Kirby had a huge say, part, was a huge part of the reason Alabama was so successful. I think Glenn Schumann is a big part, but I don't think he's massive. I, I don't think he's as big to Georgia's success as what Kirby was to Alabama's. I, 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 yeah, I think he's every bit as big because n not only is Glenn Schumann, and you, you, know, you kind of go back to the schumann Monken thing, Glenn Schumann is an ace recruiter, like an absolute ace recruiter, involved with everybody they recruit pretty much on either side of the ball. Um, you, we talked about you, – you could talk about the experience. Well, Kirby had been more places than Schumann had before he became a defensive coordinator. He hadn't had as much on-field experience as Schumann had sure. by the time Schumann – because Schumann was, was an on-field coach for six years before he started calling plays. So he was an on-field coach for that. Kirby had one year at LSU, one year at Georgia's running backs coach, a couple years at Valdosta State. Um, go Blazers, right? He'd been in uh, the NFL, so, though. I mean, by the time that he showed yeah, up, yeah, and he had, he had one NFL season. I mean, right. I, so you're talking I, I, about you're talking about like five years versus six years of on field coaching. I mean, un, I feel like I feel like Kirby was there to help Nick Saban build Alabama into what Alabama became. And then I think that I think Glenn Schumann, in, in a lot of ways, is so incredibly similar. Now, that doesn't mean that you know it took him a while longer, he didn't have the same amount of experience Kirby did. Uh, coming in, you know, once he once Kirby got to Alabama, um, but in, he's developed it before he became a, a defensive play caller. Um, but I don't know, man. You, you look back at the comments on Glenn Schumann when he was first hired. Three people in the room to finalize defensive game plans: Nick Saban, Kirby Smart, and Glenn Schumann. It's before the guy ever coached on the field. Um, All right, look, I, the, I the roads the roads it. are different for Schumann and Smart. I, I'm not necessarily looking at it from that perspective. Yeah, the resumes up to this point are different. I'm looking at what's happening right now in the context of what it means for Georgia and for Bama. Uh, what did we know about what Saban told Kirby when he was shopping around and could have taken the South Carolina job, could have taken the Auburn job? He said, wait for the right opportunity to come up. And you know that Bama kicked the tires on Schumann. What does that say about what Bama is right now compared to Georgia, at least in the mind of Glenn Schumann? Glenn Schumann decided that Georgia is a better destination right now than a lateral move to Bama, and that was not the case five to ten years ago, guys. That is what I'm looking yeah, at right now. Very true. Yeah. Glenn and, and, Schumann and you're, is you're a right co-defensive coordinator at the defending back-to-back -back national champion program in the country. He said, thanks, Bama. Maybe later – but not right now. And maybe probably got some more cash. Yeah, oh, sure. So. Of course. Of we course. don't know about it yet. You know, and who knows? At some, at some point, perhaps uh, Nick Saban retires and perhaps they're looking for a young up and coming defensive mind and uh, Glenn Schumann. Who's to say? There. And that's Glenn Schumann's going to take his sweatsuit to Alabama, it. baby. <laughs> let, let me ask y'all that. But, but I mean, let's just, you know, do y'all think that Alabama would take a chance on a 
un, you know, person who hasn't been a head coach before, just like Georgia it, did with Kirby. To me, to me, Alabama, the next guy for Alabama is should probably be somebody like that because if I'm an established guy, I don't want to have to walk in and follow. Nick you don't Saban. want it. I that's but if, if you're I'm an dead, established if guy. I'm, but if, if you're I'm an established guy, you're you're walking into a program that's probably very well off. Even in the post Saban era, I mean, he, he just saw Dan Landing take a Power Five job. Palmer, I know you've probably never seen it before. Alabama used to be just, you know, you know, ball. Mike shit. Shula, Mike yeah. Shula, guys. Yeah. Yeah, they used to be, they used to be, you know, groin sweat, dude. It was. Bad. I was, I was at the Tyrone Pro Throw leg break game. Oh, God. ooh, I was, I was there. Um, that, was, that was against Florida. I believe so. Yes. Yeah, they had, um, they had beat the they had beat the crap out of Florida. I thought that was Southern Miss. Oh, was it Southern know. Miss? It was disgusting. The, the, Southern Miss was the catch that he had. Oh yeah, he caught the catch Off around the, the guy's yeah. helmet. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, there's been all this conjecture, right, about like Dabo Swinney perhaps being the next guy, given his roots and his ties, whatever. If I'm Dabo Swinney, I'm 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 gonna stay at I'm gonna stay at Clemson. Let them build a statue of me and and you know kick my feet up and be the AD. God, it, it, he's such a whiner though. I, would, I I need him to get out of football quick. Joel Osterine has got to get out of football quick, man. <laughs> he is such a whiner. This this whole thing last week about belly aching about his fans, you know maybe they won't be upset about that. God, Dabo, shut just shut up, man. He needs to he needs to get that Gus Malzahn treatment that that Christy Malzahn just shut up. <laughs> he needs that. He needs somebody to tell him that. I wouldn't go. I wouldn't, leave, I, wouldn't right leave, now. I wouldn't leave Clemson to go to Alabama to follow Nick Saban though. No, it's, especially with what Dabo has built that program into being. Sure, it, it's he should realistically be if Clemson fans are keeping proper perspective. He should be able to coach there as long as he would like to. Just one like thing, well, and, and, and with what the ACC is and I'm, right now. And I'm not saying, listen, I, people. No. They, if Clemson fans find this, they're gonna they're gonna you know uh, come at me for that. I, Georgia should like Kirby Smart stay at Georgia for as long as he wants to for the same reason. The programs were in much different positions when the guy who's currently there took the program over. Well, he and and, and the other government. thing you've got to consider with the Clemson job is that. In this new era of the college football playoff, you you win your conference, you are absolutely in it, no doubt what you know whatsoever. Um, the Clemson should be able to win the ACC with with kind of where the ACC is at the the you know lack of competition at least SEC level competition. There's much more competition if you go take the Alabama job than there is if you stick with Clemson. I don't no. know, man. Miami got a lot better today. Miami got a lot better today. I'm let me ask saying. you. This. Let me ask you this. Uh, ultimately, boiled down to it, and because somebody just mentioned it over here, and I was thinking about it as well. If you had to choose between the two, Glenn Schumann or Will Muschamp, as, as if if you're Georgia's, if you got to keep one. You got to keep Glenn one. I, if Schumann. I'm keeping anybody on Georgia staff, anybody on Georgia staff for Glenn life, Schumann. it's Glenn Schumann. It's Todd Munkin. It's Glenn Schumann, one hundred percent. Todd Munkin's gonna Todd Munkin's gonna die a lot sooner than Glenn Schumann. <laughs> Munkin out, out out on the road uh, road recruiting. Uh, Ro, you've kind of dark. alluded to it, but I, I want to get your your laser focused crystal thoughts on Steel. You're you don't. Seem I just impressed. don't think. I mean, I, he had a couple good decent years at at Auburn when Auburn was kind of loaded with talent, and I'm talking about decent years, man. I'm not talking about like astronomically good i mean i guess they did have the you know they did put it on georgia that one time in 2017 and then turn right around and were you know got it put on them uh but i just i just don't nick saban's done this before and he was so upset with with the hire of of kevin Steele as as an office as defensive coordinator he fired him after a year and hired kirby smart uh, i mean that's just kind of how that worked out so I don't know, man. I, I just don't think Kevin – and I always hate making definitive statements like this, mainly because I'm not trying to piss anybody off. And, I, you know, I don't like it when people come back, you know, wanting to stab me because I'm not trying to get after them. Uh, but, you know, I don't know. I just don't think he's a very good coach. But one more thing on this Saban thing. The one thing about following him, uh, it's not the shadow for me, is they'll never love you like they loved him. The this is a, it's a Marcus Aurelius thing, you know. Like it's, this is like a, a an emperor of Rome thing. They will never love you like they loved him. Now, the while we're on the spot. topic of 
while we're on the topic of Bama coordinators, what do you think about Tommy Reese? I don't even. I don't. I know nothing about Tommy Reese. I know he I, does have four feet to tie in. My field. I saw him yell at the guy on the phone, and that's all I know about him. My my feel personally was that Alabama could have done worse than Kevin Steele. Yeah, they could have done Todd. Jury, jury's jury's out on the Tommy Reese hire. I, Dude, think, I personally think that was a downgrade from Bill O'Brien, but he's a young he's a young up and coming guy. So you know, I, I get wanting to roll the dice on a guy, and a lot of guys have had a lot of success at Alabama. I mean, the talent's there, right? I mean, he doesn't I, have that whole. But, but to me, but to me, the school, a lot to me, better the school, for the everyone around. Hires. The steel hire is better than the Reese hire. I don't know about that. That one's tough because I just I just don't know much about Tommy Reese. Yeah, I just don't know I, how good he. I, okay. I just know he could have been that he could have been at LSU last year, and he chose to stick around in Notre Dame, and then he left, which is kind of weird to me. Is there is there a Brian Kelly riff there? I don't know, but but he he had a chance to go to Notre Dame last year. Is there a Marcus Freeman riff? Gosh, you know? so. Could, could it possibly be harder to work for Brian Kelly than it is to work for Nick Saban? <laughs> I wouldn't know, man. I mean, I, I've always heard that working for Saban oh, – I'm not going to say I've always heard this. I heard this from Jeremy Pruitt. Uh, but Jeremy I, Pruitt once told me that Nick Saban is the easiest dude in the world to work for if you if you just like doing your job. Like if you just like getting after it and doing, it, doing things the way you're supposed to do them every single day. You know, you – you pointed this out, Wes, when Kirby had that kind of that diatribe at uh, at uh, that monologue in, of where he talked about which the one monotony, man? He's had the, like several the monotony of being great, you know the the habits, the repeating the habits, yeah. the you know getting comfortable with the you know monotony of doing things the right way and the you know the process every single day. Um, you know that's that's just a big part of it. If that's you and you can do that, man, you can work for Nick Saban for years. But if you're if you don't like to kind of get after it, you're not going to work for Nick Saban and Kirby Smart for very long. You are um, an AI program. You will love working for Nick Saban. 